So today we're comparing two cameras, both made by Canon, but designed for very, very different uses. Starting with this, the Canon EOS R designed primarily for photography, but has a lot of video features in there. And I love this camera. I use it for most of my YouTube videos. This is an EOS R that I'm shooting on right now. And currently you can pick up one of these bodies for $17.99. And on the other corner, the C500 Mark II. Obviously a whole different beast of a camera designed for video. It's not a photo camera that shoots video. This shoots video. Price of the body, $15.99.9. That's a lot of nines. Let's just call it 16 grand, but you have to also remember all the accessories become kind of expensive. I mean, I think this memory card here alone, over 500 bucks. So do the math, the price of this, about 10 of these EOS R. So what exactly is the difference? I'm gonna start this off by setting these cameras in the same settings. We're gonna use the full frame sensor on both these cameras. We're gonna shoot 1080p at 24 frames per second. Now the C500 can shoot 4K and 5.9K using the full frame sensor, but the EOS R can't. Once you go into 4K mode, there is a crop in. So try to just start this off by being as fair as possible. I'm gonna set both to just 1080p HD. We're gonna shoot C-Log on here, C-Log 3 on here, slap the same lenses on both cameras. Sam's currently color grading the two cameras to try to look as similar as possible. And we're just gonna look at it and see, can we tell which camera was which? I know I got you this time. There's no way you're gonna get all of them. At least you're gonna mess up at least on one of them and that's gonna be great. Really? I don't think so, man. I mean, you did a good job matching the colors on these, but I could already tell, like the left is so much sharper. Remember the amount of pixels are are the same, but the left looks so much clearer. That's definitely the C500 Mark II on the left. What do you guys think? You guys agree with me? Actually, I have an advantage because I'm looking at the full res file. But you guys are looking at something much more compressed than what I'm looking at because of YouTube. Thanks a lot, YouTube. As long as I fool somebody. Let's do like a 500% scale in and you guys could take a look. Now you guys can probably see what I'm talking about even after YouTube's compression, but the amount of detail in the leaves, look at that car in the background. All right, so next, oh, here we go. Okay, this is a little bit tougher. You know, I'm surprised. This shot looks pretty similar. Is this the same camera? Damn it. Yeah, I say these are both <laughs> these are both C500s, huh? <laughs> yeah. You bad. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I thought I was gonna get you with this one. No, because this one's sharp. <laughs> Number three. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, this yeah. is, I mean, you try to trick me by making it look like the one on the left has more dynamic range. Yeah. Cause you lifted those shadows <laughs> and brought down that sky. But look at the clarity. This is another good thing to keep in mind is that this is really good HD that we're working with. Like the Aria Alexa in this shot, the Avengers, and it just shoots HD in here. You show anybody and they'll be like, wow, that looks like 8K footage. But yeah, this is just a great display of how good HD can really, really get. And I would actually prefer prefer to have really good HD over like normal 4K. All right, next shot, number four. You know, the dynamic range out of the EOS R isn't bad. No, I mean, can you guys bad. tell? I definitely recommend watching this in 4K resolution, even though we are looking at HD. The reason why I say watch it in 4K is because YouTube will compress it less. In case it's not very visible, we'll just do like a five times zoom in and you can tell immediately by the amount of details on the trees on the line, just everything. Wow, the clarity is insane. These are the same lens. These are both Canon L series 16 to 35s, both at F4. But I'd be really curious to see how much of it comes across after the compression. Now, here's the thing. You might be like, oh my God, the EOS R is so soft, but it's actually really good for mirrorless DSLRs HD. But the reason why it looks soft is because we didn't add in any sort of digital sharpening. I kind of like to describe digital sharpening as just kind of tracing over pencil with a pen. It just kind of bolds out the outlines. It looks it's a lot better, but not even close to looking as good as the C500. Even with the sharpening on the EOS R, like it's it's just a mush. Cause this looks sharp from artificially sharpening opposed to the C500, which is actually capturing what's there with an extreme amount of detail. And so what I wanna figure out now is can the EOS R be used as a decent B cam option to the C500 Mark II? Cause sure, it would be awesome to have two of these or three of these, but sometimes you don't have that luxury. So I'm gonna set up the EOS R in 4K all eye codec in C log. And I'm also gonna switch the C500 Mark II into 4K. We're gonna set up a fake little documentary style interview here. And let's see if it's jarring to cut between camera A and camera B. Here we go. You're ruining my interview. This is my golden moment. 
And you're ruining it. Oh, can you leave that light on? Oh. See, she's changing all the light. Hey, you have to speak to the gaffer before you change all that stuff. All right, let's try this again. Hello, children. Today, we're talking about Audible, the sponsor of today's video. Actually, should I look at the, which camera should I look at? No, should I look at the lens? I feel like I'm, there's a disconnect. I don't know. We gotta make this look like a documentary, right? That's our goal. Okay, so I'm gonna look into space. I'm gonna look at nothingness. Take three, marker. Super proud to have them as a sponsor for today's video because I really love them and I love the flexibility of listening to audiobooks. I use it while jogging, driving, and most recently, my ridiculously long flight over to Thailand. Luckily, I had a lot of audiobooks downloaded on my phone. So during that time, I was able to stay entertained, learn new things, and really make good use out of that time. An audiobook that Carrie and I recently finished was Caesar's Way. Highly recommend that for anyone that owns dogs or two dogs or, or four dogs. Caesar Milan goes into depth on how to communicate with your dog in a way that they understand and also how to avoid sending out the wrong signals. So that was really useful. And the one I'm starting now is Public Speaking for Success by Dale Carnegie. See, when I film these YouTube videos, I'm actually not super comfortable in front of the camera and definitely not in front of crowds. So I've had to put in some work to try to get more comfortable in front of the camera. And I figured, hey, if I get good at public speaking, Speaking, that probably helped my presentation skills on YouTube. I feel like I've had less bad takes. I've been a little bit more smoother and comfortable in front of the camera. I don't know, Sam, what you think? Have I had less bad takes recently? Eh. Nah, y'all. <laughs> How are the cuts looking between the two cameras though when you switch to the other camera? Is it like, oh, the B cam's so much less sharp? Or does it look pretty good? Oh, you know what would be interesting is if we put these cameras side by side and got a very similar angle, huh? what you think? So how's this looking? Now we have both cameras side by side, both shooting 4K, 24 frames per second. And the EOS R is zoomed out a little bit, same lenses, but zoomed out to kind of counter that crop that you get in 4K. Anyways, let's keep going. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks out there, so definitely something out there for you. I feel so weird talking to space. I, you know, I'm just gonna start talking to this camera. So since they're sponsoring today's video, you can start up an Audible trial and you get one free audiobook as well as two Audible originals for free. All you gotta do is hit that link in the description, audible.com forward slash potato jet or text potato jet to 500 500. Now, if you decide to continue your membership every month, you get one one audiobook as well as two Audible originals every single month. And the price of those audiobooks don't matter. So you could actually end up saving quite a bit of money by having a membership. And once you get these audiobooks, they are yours to keep forever, even if you decide to cancel the membership. So time to get super smarter. <laughs> Audible.com forward slash potato jet or text potato jet to 500 500. Mm, all right. How's the footage looking, by the way? Does the C500 Mark II look way sharper or not really? Does it? I, what do you guys think? Most obvious benefit of the EOS R is the size of it. It's nice and compact. I can hold it out with one arm and vlog with it for a while, even if we're in kind of cramped places like inside of my vehicle. C500, I've tried vlogging on that for a little while. <laughs> Would not recommend it. It's possible, definitely don't do it. Oh, there's Carrie. How is shopping? <laughs> Carrie hates shopping. We've been out and about shopping for clothes today because I'm gonna be officiating a wedding in less than a week, so I need to have a nice sharp suit. But funny story. We went to the men's warehouse to get you a suit. We walked in and the guy was like, hey, potato jet. Hey, hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, oh my gosh. Hey, I'm looking for a suit, I need some help. For a suit? Seems like the one. Yeah, let's say I'll get you right. started. Yeah, super nice guy and super helpful. And for the next hour or so, he was helping us pick out like a good suit, which is great because I would have been totally lost without his help there. I know about cameras. I don't know anything about. All right, what's the difference between a tuxedo and a suit? You know, I don't know. But anyways, we were chatting for a little bit. He's a filmmaker here in Los Angeles. He currently shoots on a T5, but he's been kind of working at trying to get a Blackmagic pocket camera. There's too many people around, I'm self-conscious. Now you guys know that all my sponsored videos have a giveaway involved, but sometimes I like to do the giveaway in real life. So they've been tailoring my suit and I have an appointment in like five minutes to go pick it up from him. So when we go in and see him, we'll do the little giveaway, a real live surprise right here. I actually had to ask permission from Steve to if we can give it away. And his response was just, okay. <laughs> All right, let's go check out the suit. It's covered. It's covered. It's covered. I totally messed up. I to was totally not recording your reaction to the getting it. But you could you no, I totally, it? Here, you just pretend to be happy again. His reaction Yay. was like, I know, right? I totally messed up. Oh I totally messed that up. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> you, sure, you, you, don't, you, don't, you sure you don't want it anymore? No, right? it's all yours, man. Oh my god. 
<laughs> Guys, this is insane. Hey, that's pretty good for a second that's, take. That was pretty his, good. His yeah. reaction was like the best. He was like, what, what is this? Like, yeah. That was the worst time to forget to record. I don't know how to say thank stuff. you. I really no, don't. No, that was perfect, man. <laughs> this is like dream come true, you guys. Holy that's cow. Awesome. But about our suit. We're here yeah. for the suit, really. I need you to try on the coat. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, Love it. Ready to wear for tonight, man. Perfect. Well, yeah, I will uh, now put this one in the washing machine like I did to my last one. <laughs> <laughs> what a wild day this has been. <laughs> thanks, man. Dude, dude, thank you so much. Yeah, this man. is fantastic. Enjoy it. All right, thanks, Carrie. <laughs> yeah. All, right. All right, you guys. Take it easy. Have a wonderful day. Can't believe I wasn't recording. One of the rookiest of the rookiest mistakes I could possibly make. <laughs> For a moment like that, I think I got kind of nervous. So I guess I accidentally hit it once while it was down. So I have like a few second clip of me holding it by my side. And then I must have brought it up and then hit the record button. I was like, oh yeah, now we're recording. But we were so in the moment that I wasn't even looking yeah, at the camera. I can't believe that you didn't hit the record button. I know, it was such a good moment. And I was like, crap, is there a V-cam? There's no V-cam, it was just... Man. Can we get the security footage from inside the store? <laughs> now let's take a look at some ungraded footage. So on the left is C-Log 3 and on the right is C-Log. Both designed to be graded, but if we don't grade it, here's how the standard picture profile looks out of both of the cameras. And the difference in dynamic range here is nuts. And generally speaking, camera manufacturers will make the standard picture profile as good as they can make the camera look. But notice they really, really crush the shadows on the EOS R. And I wanna say that's because there's a lot of noise in the shadows of the EOS R. So to mask a little bit of that, they tend to crush their shadows a lot harder, opposed to the C500 Mark II, which retains that information, so they don't wanna crush it as hard. So because of that, the out-of-box look of the C500 Mark II, pretty good. The shadows just get so crushed on the EOS R standard mode, so if you want any sort of dynamic range, definitely shoot log. Sure, both cameras look pretty good in the mid-tones, but once you start getting in the highlights or the shadows, there's just a big drop-off of information in the EOS R. A lot of different contributing factors here. I mean, the differences in sensors, the differences in processing, and also it's an eight bit codec versus a 10 bit codec. So there's a lot more details in the colors. And C-Log3 is what I'm using. I think you could get a little bit more dynamic range out of C-Log2 actually, but I'm just really not a fan of grading it. But C-Log3 grades very, very easily. And when grading the two, I definitely noticed the C500 Mark II comes out looking a lot more natural very easily. The EOS are once you start pushing it in either direction it really starts to shift the colors and it doesn't look as accurate and as natural so i definitely want to say that 10 bit color space makes a pretty big difference in capturing natural colors i'm going to just try to overexpose everything a little bit and we'll see how far we can push it before the cameras explode so here we go we are definitely overexposed a little bit let's see how much we can correct this now this is a pretty minor overexposure both cameras can correct this okay although notice that on the eos R as you correct it even just a little bit you lose a lot of that quality you lose a lot of detail that texture especially in Sam's cheek where there's the most amount of overexposure C500 Mark II still retains that perfectly fine so really when you're shooting on mirrorless camera it's really important to hit that exposure dead on so this is at least a solid three stops overexposed looks terrible but let's see what we can do when we try to correct these log files I'm assuming the C500 Mark II is gonna look a lot Lot, lot better here. I feel like it's gonna do much better at highlight skin tone retention. All right, now let's try the opposite by turning off everything. So how are the cameras correcting? Are they correcting okay or does it look terrible? Just like the highlights, quite a bit more information coming through on the C500 Mark II. Taking a closer look at this clock in the background, so much less noise on the C500 Mark II. Again, YouTube compression might throw this off a little bit because the compression sometimes masks the noise, but definitely a huge difference in the amount of noise that's coming in through the EOS R. I will say carrying around a camera this size does get a little bit old once in a while. It's not small enough to where you can just throw it into your backpack real quick or anything like that, but but it's actually not as heavy as you might expect. There's several ways to hold it and it all feels really good. And best feature of this is the built-in ND filters. I mean, you just get so spoiled by having these because you don't have to carry around extra things to screw on. It doesn't take much time to switch it out. You just press a button and you can choose between two, four, six, eight, or 10 stops of neutral density. It's great. When it comes to overall image quality, this is the clear winner here. Dynamic range, colors, resolution, sharpness, clarity, just across the board is just better 
than the EOS R. Quick access buttons for pretty much all the basic features you might want as well as all the professional requirements like time code or gen lock or SDI out. Dual card slots can be nice if you're recording something like an event. So you can set it up for a relay recording so it starts off fills up one card then automatically transfers into the second card and then you can just swap out the card and essentially just record one huge long take opposed to something like these EOS R's where every 30 minutes the camera cuts. So sometimes I'll be talking and all of a sudden I'll see that red light turn off. I'll be like, dang it. I'm not trying to put down this EOS R. This is a phenomenal camera for what it is. It shares the same great dual pixel autofocus that you get out of the C500 Mark II. Also the image stabilization seems to be pretty comparable. They both do digital image stabilization, which has their kind of pros and cons, but there are a lot of rumors that the next generation of these mirrorless cameras are gonna have IBIS, so that should be cool. This doesn't have built-in ND filters, which is a bummer, but it does have the new RF mount, so more flexibility of lenses here. Now, when I put this camera into 4K mode, yes, there is a crop on this camera, but. I was actually surprised at how good it looked next to the C500 Mark II. Now I did spend some time trying to color grade the EOS R to look exactly like the C500 Mark II and could never really get there. I mean, the 10 bit codec in that C500 Mark II, just far superior. But as long as the angles are different enough, I think you can get away with it. Like obviously if I had to choose a B camera for the C500 Mark II, it would be another C500 Mark II. But if I had to choose between no B camera or this EOS R, I would totally use this. It is interesting though, because every time a new mirrorless camera comes out, the specs do get more and more powerful. So I'm wondering like, at what point are you gonna be able to fit this much processing power, get this much dynamic range and all this performance into a camera this size? That'd be really cool. Anyway, it's time to pull up some comments. Every video over 20 minutes should just be called hanging out with Potato Jet, cause that's what it feels like. Yeah, my video has been dragged on lately, huh? Like we're getting pretty close to 20 minutes. I think my guess, 16 minutes. Is that where we're at right now? Can we make it to 20 minutes? Probably not, I'm pretty much out of things to talk about. People looking at a weird stick protruding from Potato's butt. No, I was mounted to my motorcycle, okay? There was no stick coming out of my butt. 38 people that like that comment. Mm -mm, you're wrong. This guy never stops talking. I like. <laughs> I guess I'm one of those guys that can sometimes feel that awkward silences are really awkward. You know, some people can just sit in silence with other people and you know, like, that's this is normal. As soon as it gets too quiet, for me, I feel like I just have to say something. Blah, blah, blah. Hi, Gene, congrats on your comeback with the Fast and the Furious 9 movie. Han is alive. You look like Han from Tokyo Drift. Now I gotta look up who Han is from Fast and the Furious. <laughs> okay, I, I could, I, I don't know. Let me Photoshop his hair onto my head. Hi, I'm Han from Fast and the Furious movies. 